Hello out there to all our friends at home and welcome to a night in with Jewish House. Thank you for your incredible support of our team and their efforts over the past 12 months as we continue to navigate people through these challenging times. Together with your generosity, Jewish House helps to save and change the lives of thousands of people each year. Now, onto the main show, come in, sit down and enjoy the evening. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, friends all. What an amazing evening. Over a thousand people watching us all over the world participating in tonight's event. I'd like to begin by paying my respects to the traditional owners of the lands where we gather this evening. We also acknowledge elders past, present, and emerging. Thank you for your support of Jewish House this year. Our services always help people, but this year especially, we changed and saved people's lives. I would like to particularly thank our sponsors of tonight's event and our community event supporter, Mr. Max Gladder, who helps organize our golf day. Need never sleeps. Our team has worked around the clock to navigate with the community through COVID-19 this year. There was no warning. There was little time to prepare. And that's what constitutes a crisis. It's unpredictable, can happen to anyone at any time on any given day. I thank Hashem and feel very blessed that our entire team has managed this transition with grace and efficiency, and most importantly, in good health. Jewish House is very proud of our president and his brother, the founders of Jewish House, Roger and Anthony Clifford, who are both honored with OAMs this year for service to the Jewish community. As soon as the pandemic descended on Australia, the Jewish House team rallied together, and within weeks, they organized the delivery of healthy meals and groceries to more than 300 people. Despite the restrictions we managed to house, up to 80 people per night within our six accommodation properties. Partnering with Sydney Clinic, HealthScope, mum for mum PsychNet, and local psychologists and psychiatrists and counselors, our clinical team managed to increase our mental health and counseling support. We also created the Avoda Jobs Project, an employment service bringing community members together to mentor, upskill, and assist job seekers in finding work. We thank an anonymous donor, and the Aura Fund for helping make this happen. 
When schooling was interrupted, we purchased 30 iPads to loan to vulnerable families. We also launched JH Kids Resource Portal dedicated to supporting parents and carers. We're still very active in supporting foster carers for Jewish children who cannot remain with their biological families, working with the Department of Community and Justice. We launched several new services, medication delivery, virtual workshops, psychology and counseling sessions via telehealth. The JH COVID-19 crisis portal, a, res a resource hub with links to medical, educational, mental health, and Jewish cultural resources. We also initiated a mapping project designed to identify and clarify the services and locations of all homelessness services across New South Wales. The message I'm delivering through these challenging times is that nobody is ever alone. We are all in this together. Jewish House is there before, during, and after a crisis. Most important of all is for me to express my deep and sincere gratitude to all of you, the donors and supporters, our president, Mr. Roger Clifford OAM, the board, and my ever loyal and hardworking staff, as well as the volunteers and my committed family. May we go from strength to strength and be blessed. Amen. I'd now like to share with you a letter I've received from the Prime Minister of Australia, the Honorable Scott Morrison, just this morning. And here it reads. I send my best wishes to everyone attending this virtual night in with Jewish House. Over the years, Prime Ministers, myself included, have made a point of greeting guests at the Jewish House gala event, but never in circumstances quite like this. It is not surprising that Jewish House has made tonight happen in a uniquely COVID safe way. You'd been making things happen since 1983. This year, you've worked with greater energy and commitment than ever before and the benefits have flowed to those who need them most. The COVID-19 crisis portal and the Avoda Jobs Projects are two of the ways Jewish House has reached out to help the community during the pandemic. As Rabbi Mendel Castell says, Jewish House is about finding better ways of doing things. It's a quest that has led to some remarkable innovations, including the MEND app, connecting homeless people with support. After a year of enormous challenge and change, I want all Australians to look to the future with hope and confidence. Thanks to the work of Jewish House, many more of us can. Congratulations, Jewish House, on a year of outstanding achievement. And now I want to share with you a message from the Minister of Health, the Honorable Brad Hazard. Obviously, I've had a long uh, association with the Jewish community, but uh, um, as I've joked, I think with you in the past, I suffered immeasurably early on with gefilte fish many years ago and, and uh, have uh, attended temple and other on many occasions over the years. So yes, very, uh, very valued part of our community and friends very much so. so. And thanks for all the work you've been doing, I might say, because um, clearly my visit to you, the last one was a few years ago, I think, when we were looking at all the work you were doing with uh, um, services for homeless people particularly. Uh, we'll never forget that you even had a kennel out the back uh, for their dogs, which I thought was uh, thinking through every issue. So well done. But also the more recent uh, events with uh, COVID and you you contacting me, as I recollect, um, trying to make sure that we could look after folks who were actually in the quarantine and make sure that they had uh, opportunities for conversation, effectively mental health support and kosher food all in one. So thanks for all the work you've done on that. And thanks to Jewish House more broadly. Uh, amazing, uh, amazing uh, group of people there you've got. And it's a great privilege to have been, to have known you all for so many years. You're doing a fabulous job. 
Welcome to a night in with Jewish House. My name is Catherine Eisman and I'm your host for this evening. What's exciting is close to 3,000 people are watching alongside you right now. Can you see them on your couch? <laughs> and they are watching all around the world. Now this year has been a year like no other. And through all the ups and downs, and when I say ups, I'm mainly referring to your weight gain. <laughs> Thank you, COVID kilos. Um, it turns out that compulsive comfort eating and unexplainable passions for toilet paper and binge watching Tiger King on Netflix are some of the unexpected side effects of not contracting COVID-19. Who knew? It was a year that changed the way all of us lived. And for many of us, where we lived, uh, it was a big reason behind the, uh, why my family and I returned to Sydney after 12 years living in LA and we're so happy to be home. I know a lot of you too moved home, some of you even lost your homes. And almost all of us were forced to reimagine and redefine what makes a home feel like a home and what's really important to us. So what did we learn about ourselves? Well, pajamas are very important, day to night, night to day. Ugg boots became the new it shoe because let's be honest, wearing Birkenstocks was just trying a little too hard. <laughs> and elevating your look from pajamas to tracky dacks on special occasions was a way of showing the people you love that you hadn't let yourself go. <laughs> and let's not forget the banana bread, which we baked and ate a lot, maybe too much. And while many of you use lockdown as an excuse to stop washing your hair and only wash occasionally, if at all, and I might be including myself in that one. <laughs> Jewish House has been there navigating us through these times of uncertainty and poor personal hygiene. Things we look and took for granted, our accommodation, nutritional food, clothing and access to medication became something many of us in our community were struggling with, often for the first time. And Jewish House was there for us when we needed it most. Their crisis team faced a year like no other. They stepped up and stepped in to support communities through the bushfires and the floods and then a devastating global pandemic. Tonight is about coming together, yes, online and virtually, but to take a moment and celebrate the incredible spirit of humanity and philanthropy and community. The more that we're ripped apart from the ones we love, you know, the harder we work to find our way back to each other, to reconnect on Zoom, on FaceTime. It's a year that proved that the importance of friendship and family cannot be underestimated and that we really are stronger when we're together. Even if together looks a little different this year, like right now. We have a full and amazing show planned for you this evening, including an international keynote address from the Director of Mental Health and Substance Use at the World Health Organization, Dr. Devora Kessler, who will be discussing the global response to the COVID-19 pandemic. We have CEO of Jewish House, Rabbi Mendel Castell, who will share with us the Jewish House's local response over the past year to this amazing you know, challenge that they faced. We're also joined a little later by one of New York City's top 10 comedians, Modi, very funny. And we even have an appearance by the legendary Jackie Mason, who does not disappoint. He is still alive and kicking and our favorite nanny, Fran Drescher. Tonight is also about raising funds for Jewish House's crisis work over the coming years. Together, with our support, the team can start to rebuild the lives of hundreds of individuals and families who have been impacted by this year's devastating disasters. We've got one hour, guys, to make a difference that will be felt all year long. So where does your money go? Well, it goes directly to the people who need it most. $110 will provide one night's accommodation and fresh meals at Jewish House for a person who has nowhere else to stay. $500 will provide mediation intervention during conflicts and crisis. $1,000 will um, connect a person to 10 sessions with a Jewish House counselor to help them work through that trauma. We have raffle tickets available for sale on the link on your screen. And we will draw this live at 8.30 p.m. So you wanna make sure that you stick around for that. We also have a jam-packed silent auction. Now I have been to a lot of silent auctions. I've seen them, I've checked them out. I've been like a, a 
a piranha or a shark circling the prey. And I have to tell you that I want every single item on this. You're very lucky I'm here and not bidding against you. Do yourself a favor and check it out. It is not to be missed. So many great things. Winners will be notified via SMS after the show tonight. Please register to bid on some of the fabulous items that we have there in the silent auction. Details are on the screen right now. Now, everybody, please open up a new text message on your phone. I'll give you a second to do that. And what you want to do is you want to, your number, um, and what you do is the number you are going to send this text message to is 04-58-67-8678. Then in one text message, enter a night in with JH. It's just one word, followed by a space and then your full name. For example, if my name was John Smith, which some people have randomly referred to me as, you would do a text message that says, a night in with JH, one word, space, John Smith. And do that if you're internationally, it is plus six one, four five, eight six seven eight six seven eight. Don't forget the space between a night in with JH and your name, very important. <laughs> How tech savvy are we, by the way? Who said we couldn't code? No, I'm pretty sure this isn't Cody, but it's probably as close as I'm going to get, to be honest. Um, then you'll receive a text message back with the link. What you want to do is you just want to click on that link um, to view the auction catalogue and you can do the bidding by your phone. It's actually really simple. It's just me that make it sound complicated. <laughs> now, on to the main event, ladies and gentlemen, direct from New York City is the first Hasidic Jew to sign it with Universal Record. And they have got an amazing contract because they are a gentleman who has worked tirelessly to bring health awareness to local New York City communities during COVID. The voice of an angel, Shulam Lemma. Thank you so much, Catherine, for an incredible welcome. It is an honor and pleasure to be here with you in Sydney. I wish that I could be here in person, but Hashem got at other plans, so we have to do this virtually. But I'm still looking forward to meet you all in person one day. May it be very, very soon. It's really an honor not only to be with you, but also supporting such an incredible organization that helps people in so many different ways, but most importantly, also connects us to what we truly believe and what we truly stand for as a Jewish nation. This is a beautiful song called My Zaidi, written by Moishe Yes. Reminiscing about what the Zaidi brought into the family and to the memories for the, that they had. My Zaidi lived with us in my parents' home. He used to laugh, he'd put me on his knee And he spoke about his life in Poland He spoke, but with a bitter memory He spoke about the soldiers who had beat him They laughed at him, they tore his long black coat he spoke about a synagogue that they burnt down And the crying that was heard beneath the smoke But Zadie made us laugh And Zadie made us sing And Zadie made a Kiddish Friday night And Zadie, oh my Zadie My Zadie used to teach me wrong from right. His eyes lit up when he would teach me Torah. He taught me every line so carefully. And he spoke about our slavery in Egypt and how God took us out to make us free. And summer came along I went to camp to run and play And when I came back home They said, Sadie's gone 
and all his books were packed and stored away. Now I don't know how or why it came to be, but it happened slowly over many years. But we just stopped being Jewish like my Sadie was. And no one cared enough to shed a tear. But Zadie made us laugh. And Zadie made us sing. And Zadie made us Seder Pesach night. And Zadie, oh my Zadie, how I loved him so. My Zadie used to teach me wrong from right. And now many winters went by, many summers came along. And now my little children sit in front of me. And I think, who will be the Zadie of my children? Who will be the Zadie if not me? If not, we. But Zadie made us laugh, and Zadie made us sing, and Zadie made a kiddish Friday night. Oh, Zadie, oh my Zadie, how I loved him so. My Zadie used to teach me wrong from right. And now we all say these, we'll teach our children and our grandchildren, we'll teach them wrong. Thank you, thank you, thank you so very much. We'll be right back, back to you, Catherine. Wow, Shalom, what a voice, my goodness. That's exactly how I sound after I have a show. Now, more on him later in the show, I'd like you to introduce the principal sponsor of this evening's event, managing director of 5X and president of the New South Wales Jewish Board of Deputies, Mr. Leslie Berger. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight is a night like no other, in a year that has been like no other. Rather than coming together as we do annually, gathering together in person to raise funds for the crisis work of Jewish House, we are connecting online in the comfort of our home. 5X is proud to continue to support Jewish House. This organisation is dedicated to helping anyone and everyone in times of most need and navigating us through to easier times. Together we are stronger as a community and I am pleased to be a part of tonight's evening. I'd like to introduce our keynote speaker, Dr. Devora Castell. Dr. Castell is the Director of Mental Health and Substance Use at the World Health Organization in Geneva. She has prepared an exclusive address for us this evening and will share insights into the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic crisis on people's health and well-being around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Devora Castell. Hello, good morning. My name is uh, Deborah Kestel. I'm the um, director of the Department of Mental Health and Substance Use at the World Health Organization. And uh, today, uh, the idea is to bring to you um, an overview of uh, the situation, the landscape of global mental health, as it is uh, written in the slide, uh, in the context of COVID-19 and uh, its impact. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity to be here, even if virtually uh, with you. We, we have known for, for many years uh, that uh, adversity is 
a, a risk factor for uh, short term and for long term mental health problems. And we learned then uh, this issue in the context of uh, emergencies and humanitarian uh, situations uh, in general. And what we know now is that uh, COVID-19 pandemic uh, has uh, generating, uh, generated a, a situation that creates uh, broad uh, anxiety and uh, panic and the feelings of uh, helplessness and uncertainty that contribute to this. We recently did a, a survey on um, um, mental, neurological and substance use uh, disorder services. We, we, we got answers from 130 countries saying how are they doing with existing services. And one of the issues that we noticed is that the concept of mental health and psychosocial support that is so close closely linked to uh, situations of emergency and that we are promoting also in this context are present in almost 90 percent of countries. Uh, have They have said that this concept is included in the response plan to COVID, but uh, unfortunately, only 17% of them have funds available to support the implementation of those. Almost all countries, 93% of countries that uh, responded, said that at least one of their services has been disrupted. Services, places where people find answer to their needs in the area of mental health, neurological issues, substance use conditions, where they can find the treatment they used to do before or, or some opportunity for um, uh, new issues to, to, that have been uh, generated precisely in that context of adversity that we just uh, mentioned. So those services are uh, almost uh, um, all affected one way or the other. So. Uh, we, we have been working a lot to bring mental health as a priority uh, at global level during uh, COVID-19 uh, response. And you see there a picture of our director general talking about the importance of including mental health and psychosocial support as an integral and cross-cutting uh, component in public health emergencies response. And that's why almost 90% of countries have included mental health because they realize that the importance. We also produced in the context of the UN with the UN Secretary General a big um, uh, high-level uh, policy brief on uh, again COVID-19 and the need for action on mental health with clear assessment of the situation and very clear recommendations of what needs to, to happen. So the recommended actions that we have for countries are uh, on one hand we have been talking about investment. We need more invest investment in mental health on our own mental health, but also the communities investing in mental health and also the governments investing in mental health. This is needed if we want to move this agenda forward and make sure that the, the needs of people are, 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 are met, are, uh, they find answers. Um, the second, the second uh, uh, priority is about the need to make sure that services are, are uh, there. And the third component that is strengthen the um, monitoring what is happening because we are all learning from this uh, situation and we need to make sure that the data is available for governments then to take uh, measures according to uh, informed uh, decisions so with the data that they are receiving and so with these three recommendations I'm I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say goodbye for now I look forward to the dialogue we will have as a follow-up thank you very much for this opportunity and um, have a good continuation goodbye Thank you, Dr. Castell, providing some fascinating insights into mental health and wellness. Now let's help Rabbi and his team continue their incredible work caring for the mental health and the well-being of children and families and individuals here in our local community over the coming year. The people that they're helping are the people that we walk past every day, their friends, their families, the people sometimes we don't know are suffering. Now get your bids in now. Our silent auction is open and you could walk away with a luxe farm stay in the Blue Mountains or a trip around Sydney Harbour on a yacht or dinner for 10 at Oddo Dining. 
so much more. If you've got kids, there's some amazing kind of close animal encounters at zoos that they will love and so many other things that I really just want for myself and my family. <laughs> so make sure you get in there. Um, if you've ever attended a Jewish fundraiser, you will know that they usually run a little late. That's what we do. So in true fundraiser fashion, we don't want to disappoint, we're running a little late tonight, but relatively not that late compared to other fundraisers, not naming names, um, but we don't want to deprive you. We just have so much great entertainment, so it's all for a good cause. Um, we are making philanthropy fun. That's what we do. And what better way to do it than to turn up the humor with two of the greatest Jewish comedians of all time, Jackie Mason and Fran Drescher. Hi, it's me, Fran Drescher. Well, the rabbi asked me to say a few words to all you parents out there. Maybe some helpful tips from a certain nanny? Hmm, well, I think that the most important tip I can pass on to you is the less you know, the funnier you are. And of course, your child is your opportunity to learn how to love unconditionally and to be in the moment. And I wish you all good health and long life and continued joy as a family. Now, I hope those little critters are fast asleep so you guys could relax, kick back, and watch the show. Mazel tov. Hello to all my friends at the Jewish house. You know, the Talmud says that God has a plan for all of us. What this plan is, I don't know. But the main thing is, now with the COVID, we got to be good to know each other and to appreciate each other and to make the best of the situation. What the situation is, I don't know, because they're driving us crazy. Wear a mask, don't wear a mask. Go outside, go inside, stand there, stand there. Socially distance, six feet, three feet, nine feet, is driving the Jews crazy. <laughs> don't you think Jews have suffered enough? Thank you so much, Jackie. That was an incredible performance. The man still got it. My father said he grew up listening to Jackie Mason, so this is incredible. Till 120, Gesundheit, what a great life, makes everyone else happy. Speaking about a great, great life, this is what we ask about on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, when we ask Avinu Malkeinu, Kosveinu Besef Chaim Tovim. Especially now, Kalei Deve Vecherev Erov should get rid of all these, the whole virus, and uh, all the things that are getting us away from our daily life. So may it be an amazing year and an amazing great life for each and every one of us.
Thank you. We have an incredible musician here, pianist, or I like to call him the piano man, Shlemmy Zaltzman over here. So, yeah, hey, give him a round of applause. There you go. <laughs> I confused it. He's from Manchester, and you guys from Australia, and I keep on confusing the accents. He's like, no, you got it wrong. This is Australia, and this is, ah, I'm confused. But we're going to give him a song dedicated to him, Piano Man. Saturday, ah, the regular crowd shuffles in. There's an old man sitting next to me, making love to his tonic and gin. a friend of mine he gets me my drinks for free and he's quick with a joke or to light up your smoke but there's some place that he'd rather be who never had time for a wife and he's talking with Davy still in the Navy and probably will be for life
Well, it's a pretty good crowd for a virtual event, as Rabbi Castell gives me a smile. Cause he knows that it's me that they're coming to see. To forget about life for a while. Yeah. And the piano, it sounds like a carnival. And the microphone smells like a beer. They'll sit at the bar and put bread in my jar and say, Man, what are you doing? Isn't he got us feeling? That is such a great song. Thank you, Shulam. That was amazing. Now, tonight I'd like to share the journey of a young woman who came to Jewish House in the early days of the COVID pandemic. There are many people just like Sarah. Here's her story. controlling. When we first met, there was a sweet, sincere side to him. When his stress levels were up and money was tight, the fights would increase. His rage was unstoppable. When COVID hit, it hit hard in our home. I was petrified to tell anyone about the abuse. My family are overseas and he controlled all our money. The night that he lost his job, it was the last night I saw him. I ended up in hospital, scared and I was alone. I lost my confidence. I lost my self-esteem. I lost myself. I was broken. That Sunday morning in April, I was discharged from hospital, standing cold and alone with physical injuries. I cried and I cried. I had nowhere to go. Thankfully, a man saw me and he asked if I was okay. I told him about my situation and he said he knew a place that could help me. He phoned Rabbi and his team at Jewish House and their staff sent a card to collect me. I walked up the steps into Jewish House with only my handbag. I didn't have a chance to pack before leaving. I had my wallet, phone, nothing much more. They gave me everything. A warm bed, clothes, toiletries, but above all, they gave me hope. They gave me a safe place to rest and they didn't judge, not once. Slowly, I began building my life again. I used to be a bubbly, outgoing person, but I arrived a shell of a woman. Jewish House began their intimate process of restoring my dignity. I was introduced to my very own caseworker, Georgie. I told her everything. She just listened and told me she could help me through this, that I didn't have to carry the load anymore. The team helped me find the confidence to report the abuse to the police. I attended weekly workshops at Jewish House during my stay with them that month. 
to help build my confidence up again. I gained strength from the stories other women shared. Jewish House gave me my life back. They gave me my independence and believed in me when I thought it was all over. The day Georgie told me I'd been successful with a rental application and financial support, I phoned my mother. I didn't feel ashamed anymore and I wanted to connect with her again. When I told her about Jewish House, she broke down in tears. And she said that years ago in Hungary, my grandmother had helped hide Jewish families to keep them safe during the war. She said, that's why we named you Sarah. And now they have helped you. Every day is a challenge, but it is getting easier and I'm feeling like myself for the first time in as long as I can remember. I still see Georgie each week at the resilience building workshops and I meet with my psychologist once a fortnight too. I collect fresh groceries from Jewish House every Friday and swap recipes and try new ideas with friends I've met along the way. Jewish House, it feels like home. It's a safe place and it's open to anyone and everyone. Hi, my name is Georgie. I'm a caseworker at Jewish House. There are thousands of people just like Sarah who need our help. Please donate generously to our services. Together, we can bring hope and a fresh start at life to those in need. Every year, I give you an idea of what we plan to do for the coming year. And this year, with the fallout of COVID-19, we plan to focus on three critical areas besides our regular work and our JH Kids program. The first is our Avoda jobs, where we hope to bring the community together to help people find work. During the, during the early stages of COVID-19, we came together to deliver food and essential items to those in need. Now, we as a community need to come together to help people find jobs. Number two is Shalva and the Tony Crook Relationship Support Fund, a program to help improve relationships. In the last year, many relationships have been tested and strained. Stepping in early can avoid these getting worse, or God forbid, even to a point of violence. This project is aimed at cultivating positive relationships with partners, children, parents, and others. We will continue to expand our JH Kids program, supporting children in the community and their relationships. Number three is around homelessness and financial difficulty. And as part of this, we are proud to launch a new program called the William Cooper Transitional Subsidized Housing Program with good support from the Goodrich Foundation. It's called William Cooper after a gentleman called William Cooper, who was a very special man who stood up for his people, but also when the Nazis invaded Europe, he protested to make people aware of the plight of the Jewish people on the other side of the world. And now, a brief word from his granddaughter on behalf of the family recognizing the launch of this new program. Good evening. My name is Leonie Drummond, and I'm a proud Yorta Yorta woman and the great-granddaughter of William Cooper. Before I commence my speech, I acknowledge the traditional lands of the Gadigal people of the Ura Nation. I pay respects to their elders, past, present and emerging, and recognise their determination and continued struggle to ensure the history of this country and its people are never lost or forgotten. One of these stories is that of my great-grandfather. Born in 1861, he was a man that worked tirelessly throughout his life for the equal rights for Aboriginal people. One of Cooper's most famous campaigns was the petition to King George V. It asked the King to intervene to prevent the extinction of the Aboriginal race. 
to improve their conditions and give them a voice in federal parliament. His compassion extended beyond the suffering of his own people and in 1938 he lodged a personal protest against the treatment of European Jews in Nazi Germany. Walking from his home in Footscray with others who wished to join him to the German consulate in South Melbourne. It was one of the first protests in the world against the actions of the Nazis. In 2010, this was formally acknowledged with an educational memorial established in Cooper's honour at a Jerusalem Holocaust Museum. The family of William Cooper are honoured and support Jewish House to use the name the William Cooper Transitional Housing Program in his memory. We are very proud of our great-grandfather and feel blessed that he is connected to such an organisation that helps those that require the basics that many of us take for granted. I'm sure that my great-grandfather will be chuffed to know that this type of program is assisting those that require it most. William Cooper died in 1941, years before much that he had fought for was finally achieved. But Cooper's Australian Aborigines League and the publicity it generated marked an important turning point for Aboriginal people. Cooper inspired and mentored a new generation of leaders. The family of William Cooper wish Jewish House, its staff and supporters all the best for the future and congratulate them on the programs that are available throughout the Sydney community. Thank you. Now, I turn to you, our friends and supporters. Please dig deep and support our life-saving work. To kick off the appeal this evening, I can announce that the state government has pledged to give us 16,500 for new conferencing facilities and heaters. Thank you. Please donate generously. Hi there, it's me, Fran Drescher. Well, there's my house, there's your house, there's the Pancake House. But let's talk about the most important house of all. It's Jewish House. Talk about menches and machas and wonderful loving people who are there to support all of us. So why don't you make a donation tonight in support of Jewish House so they can help us all when we have Tsuris. Thank you, Fran and Rabbi Castell, and everyone at home who continues to donate generously to the work of Jewish House. They do the work, but without your support, none of it could be done. The raffle will draw in just 10 minutes, and the silent auction closes in 10 minutes also, so please stay tuned. Now we're going to change up the pace a little, and I'd like to introduce one of New York's top 10 comedians, Modi. Hello, Ka thank you, Catherine. Thank you so much. And uh, hello, Sydney. How are you? Wave people in the audience. You guys, what an amazing, I was not expecting this at all. First of all, I want to tell you, it's like a mix of young, old. You guys, it looks like I'm performing on a cruise. You guys with your drinks and your, and she just, I just saw you putting the makeup on. I, it's, I feel like I'm performing on a cruise. Yes, the, the woman with the red shirt. I just saw you put the makeup on. This is great. And I'm following a canter Shalom Limmer. Unbelievable. First of all, I'm very upset. I want you to know I was going to sing Piano Man. I don't know why he had to sing Piano Man. But, uh, but this is so much fun to be here. Is the rabbi there? Where's the rabbi? Is, he was sitting in the front before, is he back? Uh, no. Okay, so rabbi's away, we can do all the dirty jokes. Of, oh, there he is. Hi, rabbi. <laughs> you know, whenever you do a Jewish organization, whenever you perform for a Jewish organization, there's always somebody that is assigned to give you the keep it clean speech. And then they give you the disclaimer. It's, they always say, not for me. Keep it clean, but not for me. I, I, I want to hear your regular act. As if my regular act had a pole and two dancers. I don't know what regular act they think I have. But over here, they did not have to give me the speech because they put the rabbi with a white beard right up front. So I know that this is, you got to keep it kosher here. 
It's true. I, I did a show one time. I performed at this thing called the Sheva Brachist in the middle of Borough Park. Now, I know I have a feeling nobody in that audience knows what that means, and you're lucky that you don't. The woman that hired me wasn't only wearing a wig. She was wearing a helmet. Her husband, a nine-foot chastid with the white socks and the fur, the, the spudik, that's the fur hat that's on crack. She says to me, you got to keep it clean. Then she goes, not for us. We're not that religious. It's the in-laws. They're from Lakewood. One of the best things about these Zoom shows is that there's no honorees. Usually when you do some kind of a Jewish event, they bring some yenta, and she starts to do the thank yous and the, all that stuff, and it's just horrible, horrible. I was just on a Zoom show for, um, for an Israeli organization, and they had the woman who they were honoring or whatever, she used to be a part of the organization, and it was like listening to <clears throat> Shalom and hello. My name is Yochevet. Growing up in Israel on kibbutz Cha Ra'a, I never imagined I would be here today. Thanks to the organization Kids for Kids on Kibbutzim, or KKK, I am not only here, it is also how I found my husband, Scott. When Scott was doing his year on Kibbutz Cha Ra'a, which is north of nowhere in Israel, I saw him, and right away I knew this is my ticket out of this desert wasteland. <laughs> we got married right after I finished the army. I went from driving a tank to driving a Range Rover. <laughs> And Jews, we have, the, we have amazing organizations. First of all, Jewish House is unbelievable. They work with people at risk, people in crisis, and if ever there's a time. But we have so many unbelievable organizations, you can't even imagine. I did this show for an organization called Bone Olam. Did you guys ever hear of that in Australia? No, it's, it, they help women who need in vitro shots and hormones and all that stuff for reproduction. The rabbi called me up directly and says to me in what sounded very much like English, <laughs> hello, hello, hello. My name is Rabbi Brichen, Baruchen, Baruchen. <laughs> and and uh, I work with the organization to call the Boine Oilam. And we work with women who are trying to get pregnant, and we need your help. <laughs> that, that's exactly. <laughs> okay, okay, so now we know Australia has a sense of humor, that's for sure. You guys are amazing. It's also amazing. This is a fun, this is a fun thing. I'm following stingers. It's a great vibe. It's a great vibe. Usually when I do these fundraisers, they show some horrible movie first and then bring me on. <laughs> it's the worst. No, I did a show for, um, for diabetes, right? And they had this guy on and he's, um, he's telling this whole story. I lost my sight. They took my fingers off. There's a machine on my pancreas. And then they go, and here's Modi. <laughs> and here's Modi. It is the hardest thing in the world. People are bawling and crying. I'm go And here's Modi. I did a show at the Holocaust Museum. A great place for comedy, by the way. Amazing place for comedy. They had me follow a woman who's a survivor, and they made a movie about her. And they said, you, she'll be going on, taking the award, and she'll introduce you. They forgot to mention she's going to speak for 39 minutes about what she went through during World War II. It wasn't a dry eye in the house. People were bawling and crying. I'm in the back crying also, not because of her story, because I have to follow this, right? <laughs> she finally concludes and says, and from the time when we were taken away, and then with people and I, we, 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 we get nervous and I see my grandchildren, I know I have won the war. And here's Modi. <laughs> I'm literally following Schindler's list. You understand me? But this show is much different. You guys are like, this is a, a, a much different vibe here. The, is, is the rabbi, okay, the two guys with the, with the, with the look, see if the rabbi's laughing. I just want to make sure that the rabbi's laughing. Okay, we got the rabbi laughing. 
Yeah. You guys have Hatzalah there, right? Yeah. The Jewish Ambulance Corps? Yeah. Yes or no? Yeah. You do? Yeah. Right? Well, the Jews, we have our own ambulance corps. It's called Hatzalah. And the reason why we have it is because nobody else wants to pick us up, okay? <laughs> So we did a fundraiser, we did a fundraiser for them, and they told me it'll be all uh, uh, social distance and masks and this and that and all this stuff. And I had been quarantining like eight days in a row. I'd never leave the apartment until the grocery store. All of a sudden, I'm in this hall, just like the singer before me, he was in this hall, and they told me, you're hosting and you're this. And, and I walk in. I'm scared to death. This is in May. And there's an Israeli guard at the front. He's got the little thermometer for the forehead. And he squeezes it. So I ask him in Hebrew, I go, Mami Spa, what's the number? He looks around and says, En batarea. There's no battery. <laughs> Do you guys have any questions for me? Let me hear some questions. I want to hear. There's a microphone there for you. Are you single? I, I'm, <laughs> that's the first question. Okay, let, let, let's let's fight either way. Okay, A, if I'm single, are you going to come all the way to New York? Yeah. Yeah. We'll meet halfway. <laughs> Will you be bringing Stacy to Australia? Uh, <laughs> Stacy came out, well, you know, so, so let me tell you guys. When the quarantine began, okay, when the quarantine began, I'm like, what am I going to do? I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to just sit home and, and do nothing. No, okay. So I started to, to make videos. I made the Yoeli video, in the Yoeli, Yoeli 2020, the unprecedented president, Lachaim Lachaim. And then one day we're at a barbecue, and I see this guy. And he's Israeli, and he's the whole character. He knows everything. There was nothing he didn't know. The wine, the hummus, the dre the pita, the there was nothing he didn't know. It was unbelievable. I said, this is definitely a character. And I began to do it. And then the names, how I do all the names that I put with the Israeli names. One day I did a show, and there was um, it was for this company, a tech company, and half the company is in, is in Israel, and the other half is in America, and they were they all logged on and introduced themselves. All the Israelis were like saying, "Hi everybody, my name is Asaf. Like get, get your ass off the couch, Asaf." And the other one is, the, and then and the near came on near like not far near, and the other one I, I delete delete and then. Dorit, like Doritos, Dorit. I mean, I was dying. And then when the Israelis who had normal names came on, they were like, hi, it's David, like King David Hotel. I'm like, is that necessary? But that's how that whole character began. So I don't know. Uh, Stacy might be joining me. Anyway, I don't want to take up too much of your time. There's a big program. And um, Thank you guys so, so much. And uh, it's going back to the rabbi now. He's going to get the results of the raffle. You guys are amazing. I'm sending you lots of love from New York. Keep laughing. Zai b'simcha. Be happy. I'll see you all very, very soon. <laughs> Thank you, Marty. That was fantastic. Oh, so funny. All right, rabbi, please join me to draw the raffle. All right, the winner of the high performance Ferrari experience is Sharon Phillips. Woo! <laughs> Going home this evening with the beautiful freshwater pearl necklace, that sounds pretty beautiful, is Karen Medali. Woo! Enjoying two nights at the New Quest Hotel in Goulburn is Victoria Davidoff. Woo! The winner of the deluxe me time package it can, is Catherine. No. <laughs> is Fernand Nitrakura. Woo! The lucky winner of the ultimate foodies pack that sounds pretty is nice. Beverly Garlic. Congratulations, Beverly. The lucky winner of the Pamper Hamper, which I quite like saying. I think you wanted to have that one. <laughs> I really but want But it's it. Vivian Newman. <laughs> Congrats, Vivian. And taking the stress out of your event with a $250 catering package from Grandma Moses, so she gets to cook, not you. <laughs> it sounds perfect. It is Sue Whelan. Woo! Treating your guests to an exquisite meal with thanks from Millie's Catering is? Bernice Jacobs. Amazing. I think those are the winners. Woo!
Thanks everybody for joining us tonight and for your continued support of Jewish House. And now to take us out, we welcome back the wonderful Shulam. Thank you and good night. Over to Shulam. Congratulations to the winner of this incredible raffle. We all know, grew up speaking Yiddish. I don't know how many of you speak Yiddish or understand Yiddish, but Yiddish is a beautiful language. And in order to win this raffle, what do you need? Or in general, what do you need in life? Mazel. All you need is mazel. Right? If you have good mazel, it's good. If you have no mazel, oy oy oy. So a lot of songs in Yiddish back in the day in the Altaheim about mazel. So I made a com combination of a few mazel. And if you understand, that's great. And if you don't, Ask the next person next to you, I'm sure they'll understand. But a lot of it is in English as well. So here you go. Mazel, a shine a mool for Eden, for Eden or nicht by me. Mazel, die brings for Eden Frieden. Far a voice, far a zones to my intent. Oh, we are to the the Wenn es kommt, uf die Nacht, bleib ich sitzen in Tracht, die sind ich schon wieder vorbei. In der Schule, wo ich hab gehulen von mir, ist er weg mit dem Wind auf die Schnei. Am Masel, es scheint am Mut, Far in, far in, nicht by me. Mazel, es bringt for jeden Frieden. Far wus, far sonst du mein Team. Viene minna bisse le mazu, viene minna bisse le glit. Dere dille so sich schön drehen, i bring in mein mazu zurück. Die Welt ist doch beschaffen, für alle Menschen gleich. Viene minna bisse le chocica bisse le Chica bisele glik, hoy mile mira bisele, chica bisele, chica bisele glik. Ay Mazel means good luck, and if you have some mazel, you always have a buck. I but if you have no mazel, although you're on the ball, you try and try and can't get by. You beat your head against the wall. Don't ever try to figure why. Who seems to be to blame? That some folks have a million and can't even sign their name. That's why you gotta have a little bit, a bit of mazel. <laughs> Mazel means good luck, and if you have some mazel, you always have a buck. Ah, Mensch, Miss Huben Mazel, du siehst doch festgestellt. Oh, ich hab mir ein bisschen Mazel, ist mein Keimel ohne Geld. 
Dann streckst du raus die Hand, der läufst dahin, der läufst daher, in die Kopf, der klappst den Wand. Wir kennen mich schon gewähren, viele Kleinen fragen sich, von wo sind seine hat Millionen? Und kenn ich in die Schraube, wo, 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 Muzzle means good luck, and if you have some muzzle, you always have a buck. Ah, but if you have no muzzle, although you're on the ball, you try and try and can't get by. You'll be jet against the wall. Don't ever try to figure why who seems to be the blame. That some folks have a million and they can't even sign their name. That's why I gotta have a little pity bit of muzzle. Oh yeah. Mazel means good luck. So quickly say Habibi. He's Mazel and made a finger. Mazel Tov. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. It's a really an honor and pleasure to be part of this incredible organization and supporting such a great cause. Like I said, Hopefully sometime we'll be there in person and get to see it in action as well. But an organization like a Jewish house that does so much for the entire community and for each and every individual there is just such a great thing. And continue to support a great organization with a great staff. And thank you again for having me being part of this. Have a wonderful night, everyone. Take care. <laughs>